Work who's up must come down Eventually our bodies will break down They'll give out What would you do if you lost your legs? Would you fight? Would you live to stand and walk again? No matter what life brings We'll keep on fighting I won't ever give up I won't ever give in As long as I'm standing And I am still breathing I can do anything I can do anything I know I can All your life You've been told Never surrender and hold your ground Don't back down What would you do if you lost all hope? Would you fight? Would you live to see your home again? No matter what life brings I will keep on fighting I won't ever give up won't ever give in As long as I'm standing And I am still breathing I can do anything I can do anything I know I can Hold on to every ounce of strength you have This is your time No matter what life brings, I will keep on fighting. I won't ever give up, I won't ever give in. As long as I'm standing and I am still breathing, I can do anything, can do anything. I know I can. So, this is day five of my water fast, and um, I'm about to break it. So, uh, I figured I would sing you a little song uh, that reminds me of the moment uh, that I wrote. It's called, I Can Do Anything. So, uh... What I'm here to talk about is uh, my experience with the fast and uh, hopefully give any of you guys out there some tips and advice. Uh, we're also looking to do the same thing. Um, now, as you can see, the physique, um, sitting down, standing up, uh, I basically lost a total of 12 pounds. And I went from 164 pounds to a whopping 153 pounds in exactly five days. So how I did that was through a lot of perseverance and willpower. Now, if you guys have never done this before, I would highly advise that you guys check out some YouTube videos from uh, other people who have done the fast and uh, take note of as much detail as you can possibly take because I underwent some uh, you know symptoms that by all rights most people probably would have gave up by now 
but I pushed through because I knew that it was uh, normal. And um, well, here I am, I'm still alive, right? Um, I did a lot of things wrong in this fast uh, that I wouldn't recommend other people do. Um, I, uh, a, I didn't prepare for the fast. Um, the first meal I had was Tuesday night before the fast, and that was a chipotle bowl with a little bit of white rice, steak, uh, some veggies, and guacamole. And I wasn't uh, exactly planning to go five days on this fast. I was, I was just going to go a total of three days. But after the third day passed, I just said, hell with it. Let's roll. And I went on to the fourth day. Um, which I had been told was the easiest. However, for me, was actually the hardest. Um, I remember having vivid dreams of food and salivating uh, all over the place. <laughs> um, I, I, w I could have probably digested a steak with the amount of uh, <laughs> enzymes that were running out of my mouth. So, um, Actually, you can't do that, can you? Because steak is a protein. But anyways, beyond the point, um, day four was definitely a hard one. Um, it took a lot to get through that one, and I didn't sleep at all. Um, partially, I think that was to do with the fact that I had gone swimming earlier in the day uh, with a friend, and um, his uh, little nephew and um, that is something I definitely would not suggest that you do. Um, a, I got sunburn here as you can tell and uh, B, I think I just overexerted myself um, due to the power of human growth hormone and uh, other such mechanisms that trigger when you're on a fast and um, I felt great. I felt phenomenal. I felt awesome. Um, you know, my, I wasn't uh, cramped up at all. Day four, I hadn't eaten anything. Um, um, and I, But I did drink some apple cider vinegar during this fast, which is uh, something that I would recommend. It has a lot of potassium, and it alkalizes your body. Um, hopefully it I think, I think what it does is it helps some of the metabolic processes uh, to take place in your body and it keeps it from becoming too acidic now. Um, there are other benefits obviously, like I said, potassium uh, is very high with apple cider vinegar which is a key component to uh, muscle cramping and um, also I mixed a little bit of salt in with my water and that seemed to work uh, rather well. Um, I didn't drink a gallon of water a day. I didn't uh, go to town and and drink. Uh, you know, have constantly have a, a, a bottle of water sitting next to me in case I was fiending for any reason. I just drank when I felt like it, and it wasn't uh, probably more than a few eight ounce glasses a day at most. Um, now, uh, again, the first day I was definitely hungry. Second day I was hungry. Third day I definitely had uh, visions of plum trees in my brain. <laughs> um, and fourth day also hungry. So uh, you know they, they say that the hunger goes away at the day four. I, it did not happen for me which is fine. I think everybody's different now. Um, could have been to the fact that I didn't really prepare well in my uh, preparation for the fast and uh, could have been other other mechanisms at play but uh, beyond that uh, again it's day five um, of my water fast and uh, the goal of this video is yeah, check you know do a physique check check in with the abs yeah yeah buddy and uh, no, I don't think that I lost any muscle during this fast. 
I mean, you can see I don't, I still have my back here, the V taper. Um, my shoulders didn't just magically disappear. Um, you can see I've got a bicep, it didn't go away. It didn't, uh, didn't um, crumble into dust. So a lot of people are scared. It's like, it's, it's like looking at someone um, when they see a deer in the headlights when you tell them that you haven't eaten for four days or five days or three days. It just seems to be like this mainstream epidemic, almost like we were living in the 1400s and, and you told somebody the world was round and, and they were scared that you'd fall off the edge. Um, so I gotta say that overall people are highly uneducated on this subject and uh, I don't engage people. In fact, I, I really have a hard time talking to friends about it because it just seems like they don't get it, what I'm trying to do. Um, by the way, that's a good point. What am I trying to do with this fast? Well, as you can see, um, or maybe you can't see, I have a little scar, a little scar here, and there, and there. No, I'm not trying to heal my scars. What I'm trying to do is heal my groin pain from my hernia surgery that I had about five weeks ago. I suffered from a uh, inguinal hernia on the right side and I ended up getting the uh, bilateral hernia repair with mesh. And what that consists of is they just basically put a piece of Velcro right in front of your abdomen, or I think it's behind the abdomen actually, and um, they patch it up and uh, stitch up your abdominal muscles and then you're supposed to heal and everything's supposed to be something like 90% healed in three weeks. So I went through the process of the surgery and got out of the surgery and everything seemed okay. I, I was able to uh, uh, go number two on, on day number two, surprisingly, and uh, you know, highly constipated, of course, so that was kind of a struggle, but um, in the end, I, I had a great recovery. It seemed like it was going very well. And um, I noticed about three weeks later that I had a certain groin pain, which I thought was similar to the hernia that I experienced before the operation. But upon further notice, I, I started to realize that and this groin pain was, was more than meets the eye. And so I made an appointment with the doc. We sat down and talked about it. And um, he didn't really have a sound answer um, other than the usual physical therapy and um, let it heal, uh, don't baby it, you know, go into the gym and, and get some work done and et cetera, et cetera. Um, do what you can as you can do it. He didn't have any specific numbers to tell me how much you could lift or anything. He just kind of said, hey, do what you can do and uh, run with it. So I kind of realized at that point that the doctor was <laughs> of little to no help, um, other than the fact that we did get an MRI, which I don't uh, have the results of yet, but obviously they're coming, uh, so stay tuned. For that but in the end I just decided to take it into my own hands to see if uh, the research that I'd been doing on fasting would uh, pay off and um, so I, I, I decided to take a three-day fast and of course I've uh, now extended to five um, but I do feel a little bit of the groin pain still. I don't know if that's because uh, the fast is trying to heal the wounds uh, or my body's trying to heal the wounds uh, from 
uh, from the fast, but I do still kind of feel it like when I when I squat down, when I sort of lift my leg here and down like this, I can sort of feel a little tinge right down in my groin. So, so I'm not so sure if I was successful in healing uh, the wound, but I will say this: um, I feel great. I feel great. Um, I. The only reason for breaking this fast is I have finally, <laughs> out of my whole life, felt the true feeling of hunger. And most people, uh, when they experience hunger, they think of it as, oh, my stomach is growling, I'm hungry, I have to eat. Well, no, I'm sorry, that's not hunger. That's sort of a trick of light and shadow, um, oftentimes associated with uh, high carb intake. So I would um, advise anybody in that uh, realm to dump the sugar immediately. Go, to go cold turkey, get rid of the sugar outright. Um, it is nasty, it is a drug in my opinion. Um, and uh, as soon as I got it out of my life, it was the day that I started to be able to realize uh, a healthy body. And um, ever since, I've been going more and more towards ketosis. Uh, I wouldn't say that I, I'm on a keto diet. I definitely do have a carb intake over 50 grams, so technically you can't say that I'm, I'm in ke ketosis all the time. But I do undertake have undertaken intermittent fasting for probably, geez, at least, I, I want to say nine months, maybe. Nine months, six to nine months is, is, a, is at least a rough figure of how long I've been doing intermittent fasting. And so that's, actually, you know, obviously prepared me for this five-day fast, which is another point I should make is that don't jump into this cold turkey. This is not for the faint of heart. And this definitely is a, uh, uh, how, to, how should I say, it's like like a, a, a karate. You know how you, you start out at white belt and you move up to get black belt. You don't just jump in to black belt and start fighting another black belt and, and think that you're going to win in a jiu-jitsu match, right? So... This is the same sort of thing. You, you start out at white belt and you move your way up. And by that, I mean you one day skip breakfast. Um, that, that would be the first idea. And um, do that for maybe a week. Just, just skip breakfast and see if you can handle it. You can, you can push breakfast out from, let's say, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock. You know, and keep pushing it out further and further until you get to lunchtime, and then you can replace breakfast, uh, lunch, or breakfast with lunch, and then you start there. You move lunch out two hours every day or one hour every day, however you can handle it, and so on and so forth, and you get to the point where you're on basically the warrior diet, which is you fast uh, until dinner. You basically have one meal a day and you feast. And, and I had been doing uh, mostly the warrior diet um, mixed in with maybe lunch and dinner some days when I have a heavy workout. Um, but, uh, and my workouts are usually powerlifting workouts. So I typically uh, do like Wendler style training, um, which is called 531 if you're interested in that um, it's a really great program it it helps uh, natural bodybuilders increase strength tremendously and obviously gain some muscle along the way um, and uh, I think that really helped me with uh, keeping keeping this you know muscle that I actually put on um, but uh, Basically, this is now time to break my fast. And um, I thought I would share with you uh, either the physique, uh, the weight, and uh, 
maybe you could walk through with me and uh, celebrate uh, the accomplishment of this five-day fast. Um, so take a walk here and we'll check the weight and then we'll uh, we'll go break the fast and uh, you'll see what I am going to eat. So, checking the weight, and we have 153.8. Hopefully, you can see that. 153.8. I'll do that one more time in case you didn't catch that. Uh, it's 153.8. One more time. If I can get the damn scale to work. 153.8. Alright, let's try that. 153.8. Alright. So, hopefully you got that. And uh, in a little better lighting, uh, here's, here's the physique. And uh, can't really see that, can you? Check the mirror. And if I can get in the shot. There I am. See the rib cage. Now the uh, little rash there, that's from swimming. So that's definitely nothing to do with the fest. Obviously I'm sort of flexing here. This is me just pushing out. So this is completely trying to have a baby. Here, we're sucking in. I'll get the back shot. Get some legs in there too, huh? If I can get it in the shot. So there you go, that's the physique. And uh, one more time if you didn't get the weight. Here's where I ended with. And again, my starting weight was about 165 pounds. So, you do the math. It's about 11.2 pounds, right? Cool. Hopefully I'm right. Alright, so, I am going to do one great fast with this. Yeah, we have a watermelon. I did a lot of research on uh, how to pick an amazing watermelon and uh, I came to find the best way do it. Okay, let, me, let me go over here and get better lighting. <laughs> or not. Where are we at? Here. This is good. We'll do it right here. Oh, yeah. I didn't experience a lot of weakness during this fast. A lot of people do say that they experience significant amount of weakness now I did experience some dizziness during this fast if you guys are interested um, it's the kind of thing where God, 
sure enough, some of these lights may be over here. I think uh, this is just getting in the way here. There we go. Let's try this out for size. Okay. Kind of sucks over there. All right, so we're going to do it right. Right here. Place, but hey, it works. All right, so we're gonna do it right here. Again, here's the physique. watermelon up now. All right. I am going to slice this in the quarters. Go right here. I'm try to cut it in half. Best as I can. find the spot where the watermelon was sitting on the ground. It's a yellow spot, usually flat. So this is how the watermelon grew from the ground. And so you want to find one that has a nice big yellow spot here. What you do is you take the watermelon and you hold it to your head and you knock it. If you hear a super hollow noise, then you know it's a ripe watermelon. If you hear it like it, like it's more dead, then maybe you're just brain dead. Or maybe not. All right. So what we're gonna do now? We'll cut this in fourth. Another thing, by the way, something that I experienced on the fast, and one of the reasons why I broke it, is because I started to experience a lot of uh, heart palpitations. Really, it's it, it, it's it's not. Not like I was an irregular heartbeat or anything like that. It was more like a hard thumping that I'm not accustomed to. Um, something like, I don't know, you would experience on, on some kind of drug or something maybe. Um, something that, like Ritalin, that would change your, your heartbeat. And um, so that's one of the reasons why I am breaking the fast. Now, I also experienced a little bit of chest pain, um, which I'm going to say was to do with the, the heartbeat change. It was, it was really kind of weird. I basically, uh, while I was riding with my friend to the driving range, he and I, um, I noticed the pain in the heart and, and initially it was just a little bit of a tinge but it it kept on getting worse and worse and it wasn't like debilitating or anything i wasn't like falling over having a heart attack or any crazy thing like that but it was definitely something that hit me and struck me that i have never felt before so i do have to say that it it must be 
Either that I might be switching over into some other fuel. I don't know. Maybe I was uh, digesting something in my body that hadn't, hadn't, or maybe it was shutting down. I'm not quite sure. Maybe the digestion system was fighting to stay alive. I don't really don't know, but it was really odd. So uh, that went away, and I would have continued the fast, but the number one sign to quit your fast, as I have read, is uh, feeling the true sense of hunger. And not many people understand this. Like I, I think I talked about this earlier. It, it's a feeling in the back of your throat. It's like almost like a strep throat type of feeling, but more of just a dry throat. Uh, that's about all I can, can explain it. Um, and, uh, if y'all are doubting, <laughs> you can always check the tongue. And, I sure have to tell you, right? Let's see if I can get the light here. Uh, it should be pretty white, but... Again, maybe that's uh, different for some people too. I'm not quite sure. I know I didn't experience a lot of the white tongue that I've seen other YouTubers uh, experience. So. Anyways, um, how shall I do this? Should I just cut into it or should I just bite into it like a goddamn animal? I think I'm gonna bite into it like a freaking animal. I've been waiting for a long time for this. So, uh, without further ado, here we go. Mm. Okay. Okay. That wasn't the yeah. mm. 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 That wasn't the the rush that I was expecting. But that does taste damn good. Um and that might be because of uh, the fact that I did uh, drink uh, 